What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about three simple lighting solutions to help enhance your video using only one light. I'll give you three examples today and at the end we'll have a bonus tip of how you can get the most out of your one light setup. I will share with you what light I recommend buying if you're just starting out and wanting to buy your first light. I'll also be sharing with you a list of gear that I would recommend you buying if you're wanting to invest in your first lighting setup. So make sure you stick around to the end. So with all of that out of the way, Let's get into it. The first lighting setup that we're gonna be talking about today is just the simple key light. You'll be surprised with the results that you get with using only one light if you just have a little knowledge on how to use it. So what's cool about this lighting setup, you can light up your subject's face while also lighting up the background a little bit. This technique best works when you have a blank background, maybe black or gray, and you kind of are getting more of a moodier feel. So what's nice about this setup is you really don't need much else. As long as you have a background like the one I have, preferably darker um, so that it, the light has more of an effect on the background. And if you have texture on your background like I do, it helps even more. Uh, but what's really cool about this light is that it's super simple and it only requires one setup. If you don't have access to a parabolic softbox like this one, or it's just not within the budget to grab one right away. Another way that you can achieve this look is with what's called scrim. I use unbleached white muslin and I put that on a C stand, clip it together and put my light right behind it. I'll keep it a good distance away from the scrim so that way the light is being spread out a little bit more and is a little softer on my subject's face. I actually like to use this technique a lot in my short films and uh, more of my narrative stuff. If you look at the Noble spec commercial that we did not that long ago, you'll notice uh, the soft lighting there when we're in the gym and it really just provided a, a lot of depth to that scene. There's also a behind the scenes video on how we did that. So go ahead and make sure to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Scrim is a really great way to enhance your scene and really get the depth that you're trying to create within your scene and, and in your lighting. And it's very inexpensive, which we'll get to a little bit later in the video. However, if you, you don't have access to Scrim or it's unavailable or you just need something right away, another way to achieve this look would be just to use a frosted shower curtain or a white bed sheet. There are plenty of examples of this all over the internet, so make sure you can check that out. But yeah, these are just a couple ways that you could do it. If you have a white bed sheet, you could totally do it. If you have a shower curtain, set it up. I mean, honestly, just, just use what you have and, and make your film practical lights. So one way to enhance this setup is to use the practicals in your room. If I were to turn this tube light off and just use the practicals behind me, it would still add some depth, give me a little bit of hair light, and it would, it would be a great look. So please excuse the audio. I'm in our common room right now and it's not soundproofed yet, um, but we're getting there. But anyway, as you can see, the practical light behind me is uh, lighting up my shoulder and this part of my beanie and my face here to kind of separate me from the wall behind me. So here's an example of the same shot with just the practical light on so that way you could see what it's doing in the background. This is actually a really great vlogging setup. I would, I would use this if it wasn't for the audio, I'd totally use this. And the coolest part about it is that it's just with one light so it's super easy to use. So setup and tear down uh, is simple. It could add a lot of depth to the scene. So that's one thing to consider. So one other way is to use daylight or window light. Daylight is a great way to add depth for your scene without too much setup and that'll fit any budget because it's free. <laughs> one example would be to place your subject in front of a window and then you can use your lighting setup behind them as either a filler light or motivated lighting. All of these techniques are great. However, the one thing that can't be beat is daylight. If you have great cloud cover like I do right now, or if you're shooting at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, like I am right now, uh, here at the end of the day, blue hour, uh, then you're in good shape. But if all of these other techniques fail or if all else fails, just get outside and turn on the camera. So here are a couple of tips when working with daylight. As the day goes on, the light continues to change throughout the day and it can be really hard to control and maintain the same look. Just a little bit of a shift in where the sun's positioned in the sky can really drastically change the look of your scene. And so you really wanna control that lighting as much as possible. So here are a few ways that you could do that. One is to take that scrim that we had talked about earlier in the video. Place that on a C-stand right in front of the window. If you don't have a C-stand, you can just use 
tape. I use gaffer tape here, but if you don't have that, then you could just use duct tape, tape it to the wall. Be careful though, because duct tape can peel off the uh, paint on your walls and you might not want that. Using scrim in front of the window like that really helps control that lighting and gives you a really soft roll off if you position your talent in the perfect spot. If you don't have access to scrim or you need to shoot the subject with uh, the view of the window, in the frame. One way you can combat this is to either shoot in the morning or in the evening. This is when the sun is lowest, of course, so you're gonna have much less harsh lighting on your subject. My favorite time to film, if I need to do this, is uh, during blue hour because it's gonna give the perfect soft lighting and I really just like that moody look. So those are just a couple tips and when using daylight, Let's move on. And now we're finally at the bonus tips. Here are a few things that I've learned over the years and still use today when I'm lighting a scene. I'm gonna be mainly talking about, you know, a cinematic kind of look if you're looking to shoot a short film or even for your vlogs, this would work or just to add more depth to your, to the lighting in your scenes. Always shoot on the shadow side, unless it's not appropriate. For example, if you're shooting, you know, a makeup commercial, you probably don't want a shadow side. You want everything to be even. Uh, however, if you're shooting a talking head like this, or you uh, are shooting a documentary, and especially if you're shooting a narrative film, you definitely want to shoot on the shadow side. This is going to help add more depth to your scene. Motivated lighting. Using practical lights. So for example, if you're lighting a scene and they have a floor lamp next to them, that would be a practical. And what you would typically do on a film set is grab a light that has that same color tone and use that as what's called motivated lighting. If you are limited on the gear that you have and you're really trying to get the most out of your scene, consider motivated lighting. Another tip I have for you is just knowing your camera, knowing your story well to know how to light your scene. The less you know what your story is and what you're trying to have your viewers feel when they're watching the scene, the less you're gonna know how to how to light it. <laughs> it just goes to show that preparation is, is just one of the key elements in filmmaking, which leads me actually to my next tip, and that is just prep time. We do a lot of pre-production here when we do any kind of film, even for these talking heads, even for these YouTube videos, we do a lot of prep work in Milano, not a sponsor, but if you've watched our videos before, you know that we use Milano a lot and we love it. We use this to storyboard, throw down ideas. I mean, anything and everything when it comes to our films, we, we always just toss it into Milano. It's, it's a great tool. So you just gotta prep, prep as much as you can and know exactly what you need for your film and it's gonna make it a lot easier when you're on set. Okay, now down to which light I would recommend if you were buying your first light. Well, there are many great lights out there. There's the Godox VL150, which I'm using now for this talking head. There's also the Aperture 120D, which is most commonly used for YouTube channels. I have one of those as well, and you'll see it in the examples that you just saw in our one light setups. The Amaran 60X, it's a small bicolor light. It's actually pretty powerful for how small it is. I've used it for so many, you know, different films where we're in tight spaces. It really comes in handy for those kinds of things. Not to mention it runs on batteries. So if you're outdoors and you need a light and you need it to be portable, this is, this is an amazing light. We also have the Amaran 100D. I'm pretty sure it's the 100D. Also a great light, very affordable. So we have quite a few lights here. So which one of these would I choose? If you're just starting out and you're on a budget and you want a great lighting setup for a really good price, I definitely would just go with the Amaran 60X, the bicolor one. It's not as bright as the 60D, but it's actually extremely bright for how small it is. It's also very portable and it can fit on most stands and it's also bicolor. So you can go for you know a fire look or you have a couple people around a fire pit, you can light them up, doubling at that as your key light and your special effects light, which I think is really cool. It's also very easy to use and you can connect it to the app where you could do so many other things with it. I believe that this light right now it's on Amazon for $199. Such a great deal for a really great light. So here is a quick list of some of the gear that I would buy if I was just starting out and I needed a full lighting setup. The Amaran 60X at $199 US, a C-Stand, which I would recommend. You can get a, um, a much more inexpensive lighting stand. However, I do recommend investing in a C-Stand. If you're gonna buy a C-Stand, invest in one, a nice one. The last thing you want is for your C-Stand to be hanging over a subject and it breaks and somebody could potentially get hurt. But these can go for anywhere from $130 to $215. The reason I would recommend one of these C-Stands is because there's just so many things that you could do with it. 
Plus, you could put accessories on it and also double that stand as maybe your mic stand. If you do buy a C stand, make sure you buy a sandbag to hold it down so your light doesn't, you know. You could also buy more of a budget-friendly kind of stand just to start out. These are great too. You could buy so many good ones on Amazon. They go anywhere from $35 to $85. Again, I would just recommend buying the $85 one if you can afford it, or somewhere in between that, maybe a $50 one. You really get what you pay for with these kinds of things. I also recommend buying a modifier for your light because this is gonna help in many types of situations. I recommend getting some sort of soft box, whether it's a parabolic soft box, much like what I'm using here. You can also uh, use what's called a lantern soft box. You could use that for just lighting up a whole room if you have a bunch of people and you need to light all of them up evenly. These modifiers can go anywhere from $90 $99 to about $220 US on Amazon. And then if you're gonna go the route with Scrim or you just wanna add that to your lighting kit, I get that on Amazon uh, for about 10 bucks. So those are my tips for getting the most out of your one light setup. If you liked this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, peace.